Good people YouTube, I'm a it, and many of us now have had a chance to take in the new releases from Tudor, like the Black Bay 58 GMT and the Black Bay Monochrome, now that it's been well over a week. Arguably, the more significant release is the Black Bay 58 GMT, just because it's a watch that we've been asking for for years, and it's finally here, and it's only 12.8 millimeters thick, which is a huge improvement over uh, past GMT. So yeah, I mean, what's not to like? As it turns out, not even a watch that was so intensely requested is free from controversy. So in this video, I'm gonna look into why the Black Bay 58 GMT is giving me cause for concern, even though I've gone through sort of a roller coaster of emotions and opinions about the watch. And right now I'm on the optimistic end of this wild ride, but I'll also look into why the Black Bay 58 GMT is running into problems and what it shows about the community as a whole and where we're at mentally. So yeah, let's just uh, get into it. So before we start, I'll put out my public service announcement saying that there is no one who can know for sure what a watch is gonna be like until it's actually on their wrist. But by going through all the live photos online and videos, you can get a sense of what it's like. So that's why I'm still excited to get my Black Bay 58 GMT. But my newfound optimism wasn't always present because of the controversial guiltness. This has the fully gilt handset and indices, but it's also got a fully gilt bezel, which is not unlike the original Black Bay 58. And I was not and still am not really a huge fan of that particular Black Bay 58 because of the gilt bezel. To me, it just didn't feel right on a dive watch. And that's why when the Black Bay 54 came out, it was essentially my perfect Black Bay because only the dial was gilt, not the bezel. And the gilt dial actually turned out to be a pretty big plus point for me. So I'm starting to like gilt, I guess, maybe. So then naturally I wasn't enthused by the fully gilt bezel of the Black Bay 58 GMT when it was released. Although given the color of the bezel and the fact that it's not a dive watch, but rather a sort of jet setty, not pure tool watch type of watch, it could actually work pretty well. So that's where my optimism is coming from. And actually now that I think about it, with especially if this is burgundy, it could work quite nicely. So fingers crossed for that. But of course there are many more factors to consider and many more potential issues that might pop up in person and down the line. And it's not just me, it's kind of crazy to see the apprehension online because while there are folks who are fully excited about this watch, in my poll, which as of this recording has 1,800 votes, the Black Bay 58 GMT actually lost to the Black Bay 41 monochrome 47% to 53%, which I was not expecting. I would have expected a Black Bay 58 GMT to win by at least a 60-40 margin, but here we are. Also, when I posted different versions of the Black Bay 58, taking out the gilt and also making it monochrome, the response was positive and people really liked the clean, crispy Coke bezel without any gilt. So then all this talk about the gilt bezel got me thinking about why it's actually a potential problem. And from what I've gathered, it's down to two things. Oh my God, I hate leaf blowers. Oh my God. From what I've gathered, it's down to two things. Many of us just don't think that this gilt works in this particular watch with this particular color combination for whatever reason. But more interestingly, I think that just a lot of people are just tired of gilt and the intense vintaging of watches or the vintageizing or vintageization, you know, one of those words. But first up, why this much gilt doesn't quite work. And I'm just speaking for myself now, but I have specific reasons why I'm concerned about this watch, despite still being excited. Main thing is that matte gilt is the problem really because matte colors always end up looking more saturated because they don't reflect much light. Whereas a gilt handset of my Black Bay 54 looks much more subtle because it's reflecting light. So the actual color isn't fully showing all the time. That said, the bezel also looks to be shinier than usual, which should help combat the intense gilt. So, you know, that's something to look out for uh, in real life. And hopefully that helps offset the intensity because from what I've seen in videos and live photos from Watches and Wonders, it does seem to be doing the trick, but we have to also consider the fact that all those videos and pictures were taken in a controlled environment with controlled lights and, and or sort of boutique intense lights, so not actual real life. So yeah, hopefully it's just better in real life and real light and real sun. So yeah, again, 
fingers crossed with that. And also the more I'm seeing it, the more yellowy slash orangey it's looking, which is worrying me a lot. And to me, it's looking like the color of the gilt isn't quite the same as the more sandy gold color found on the bezel of the original Black Bay 58. While that watch isn't for me, the gilt bezel and that color, it is well done. And I am hoping that is that color of GM of guiltness that ends up on the Black Bay 58 GMT. Yeah, this might end up being the first time that the press photos and renders make a watch look better than it does in real life. And yeah, hopefully that's the case because the vast, vast majority of the time, press photos just don't show the watch accurately. And most of the time a watch looks worse in renders and press photos. I don't, I don't get why brands just don't use photos that accurately portray the colors at least. You know, it doesn't take that much effort. Just throw it on the Lightroom and off you go. And now the second issue that the Black Bay 58 GMT is running into, and that's uh, more about where many of us are in terms of our evolving tastes as a community or many of us. Yeah, I think we're just a bit tired of the extra vintageizing and just some aspects of the vintage aesthetic just because it's been around for years and the Black Bay, the original Black Bay was arguably the watch to actually bring it to life in 2012. But despite it sparking the vintage craze, I don't think that the identity of the Black Bay necessarily has to remain intense vintage. It can find a middle ground of very classic designs, but with a modern feel and look, which is exactly what the Black Bay 41 monochrome that was just released is. And its popularity over the Black Bay 58 GMT or even getting close to it is proof. Also, the Black Bay 58 GMT would have had vintage looks without going full gilt because here, even with everything looking super crispy, the polarizing riveted bracelet is there and it doesn't have a crown guard either. So yeah, the Black Bay identity would have remained. Of course, a separate issue is that Tudor wouldn't be able to actually make a fully Coke bezel version because it would be really close to a potential future Coke GMT Master 2 from Rolex. And one thing that's for sure is that Tudor and Rolex very rarely step on each other's toes. So yeah, question mark on that. But zooming out a bit and looking at all vintage inspired watches for me, it really comes down to whether or not the vintage design cues or Fotina is integrated as a part of the watch design or if it's just stuffed into a watch just to make it vintage. In other words, would the vintage design cues still work if the watch wasn't necessarily directly vintage. Personally, I think very lightly Fotina Loom can look okay as a color choice, sometimes adding a touch of warmth works with a watch because it just works with the design. Great example is the Black Bay Pro. The cr very lightly creamy Loom color adds to the experience without just smacking you across the face saying is vintage. You know, it works really well on a standard black rubber strap and also it would look really good on a non-riveted modern bracelet. So it goes to show that the, the Fotina Loom isn't a detriment and unnecessarily vintage. So yeah, there you have it. Let me know down in the comments how you're feeling about the Black Bay 58 GMT after nearly two weeks. And uh, yeah, until the next video, good day.